Hi, everyone. Welcome to the CDS workshop, Intro to AVI Images. Uh, my name is Frank Hagen, and I'm an engineer at Google in charge of AVIF. I also work on uh, image, video, and geometry compression as well. Uh, I just want to you know there's some prerequisites. Um, I'm going to use uh, AVIF to do some uh, creating of AVIF images. But don't worry. Anything, if you want to follow along, I'll have links to all the, the images I either use as source or the images I create. So you, you can uh, download them if you want to use them. Here, this is just a little graphic kind of showing the relative timeline for the, uh, some of the major image codecs used on the web today. Uh, you know, the ones most people are probably familiar with is GIF, JPEG, and PNG which are you know, somewhat from uh, 35 to 25 years old. WebP, probably most people have heard of, came out about 10 years ago. And then AAF, what we're talking about today, uh, was uh, the specification came out in 2019. OK, a little, a little bookkeeping. So what is a digital image? And I apologize if, if it's uh, uh, you know, if, if most people know this already, uh, sorry. Yeah, I think I can share the slide and the GitHub link for the AVIF. Sure. Maybe I can. Uh, someone could maybe post that link in the chat. That would be good. I keep going to my next image. If not, I'll, I'll share it later. All right. So uh, what is a digital image? Oh, thank you, Donovan. Uh, basically, digital images is a 2D representation of visual information. Uh, typically, one unit of this 2D grid is called a pixel. You might also hear the term megapixels. That's basically one million pixels. So, you know, when you get your mobile phone or, or other cameras, they usually say, oh, I can shoot in five megapixels, 10 megapixels, 48 megapixels. So that's basically just a million pixels in this 2D grid. Uh, most of the current smartphones take pictures with a resolution of uh, 3,024 by 4,032 pixels, which is about 12 megapixels. Um, and then pixels typically contain three channels, which map to the red, green, and blue values that are mixed to the color we see rendered in the image. This is, typically, there's, there's a lot more. You know, you can alpha and other things as well. Okay, so. Why do we have image compression? The 12 megapixel image compressed is about 36.6 uh, megabytes, or other people will refer to it as 24 bits per pixel. Again, this goes back to the red, green, and blue, basically eight bits for each value. Uh, newer formats or images with alpha could be even bigger. JPEG on the web, uh, they're usually compressed about one to one and a half bits per pixel. So a 12 megapixel image would be about two megabytes. So great, we just made the images 20 times smaller. Thank you, everyone. I hope you like the presentation. Oh, all right, even though JPEGs are a lot smaller than uncompressed images, images still make up a good percentage of websites today. Uh, Paul Calvano gave a talk recently at, at the Image Ready Conference, it's listed on this slide. Um, they looked at millions of sites, and 45% of the page weight was from images. Also, uh, the median image size was 881 kilobytes. So and this is also another piece of information from Paul, again, is they found out that 42% of sites um, had an image element that triggers the LCP. I'll kind of go into the LCP a little later. Uh, in reality, this is even higher than 42%, because the next highest LCP event is the, the div element, which could contain text or image. 
So picking the correct image for Mick can improve uh, your, core web, your core web vitals, uh, or CWV. And I also want to mention uh, that Lighthouse, which is a part of Chrome Developer Tools, will now estimate if you switch, uh, uh, estimate the savings if you switch your images to ADIF. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, now also I want, I want to talk about uh, the types of image compression. Basically, you start with two main types of image compression, loss, loss lists or lossy. So lossless compression will take the data in the source image, compress that data, and then decompressing the data will return the exact data from the source image. That's great. So why do we even have lossy compression? Well, lossy compression will usually create much smaller files, and also, depending on the compression format and settings, lossy, comp lossy compressed files can be compressed to what is known as visually lossless, meaning the lossly compressed is perceptually the same as the source image. Um, so on the graph on the, on the right, you can kind of see uh, the PNG image format, which I haven't talked about too much to this point. Uh, PNG is a lossless format is used on the web for a lot of images. To show one difference between the lossless and the lossy compressed images, I made it, I made, you can see it in the chart. I took about 20 or so pictures captured from my camera at, 20, at 12 megapixels. The average size of the captured image, captured images as JPEGs is about 3.5 megabytes per image. I then compressed the image as PNG files. You can see the average image size for the PNG is about 13 megabytes, almost four times bigger. You can also see uh, the, the yellow little sliver uh, uh, from the graph is the AIF um, average size, which is about 0.5 megabytes, or about 26 times smaller than PNG. Okay, one caveat is that PNG is probably best suited uh, for non-photo type images. So if you use PNG and those types of images, it might fare better than the graph you're seeing here. Uh, okay, so ADF is based off of the AV1 video format, which was released in 2019 by the AIM organization. The, AI, the AVIF specification was introduced by uh, some people from Microsoft and Netflix. Uh, ADIF is open source and royalty free. Uh, AVIF was first released in Chrome 85 for the desktop and Chrome 89 for mobile and Firefox 93 for desktop. And basically at a high level, ABF compresses, we say ABF compresses images from twice as small all the way up to about 10 times smaller than JPEG for the same quality. The key point here is the same quality. So that's great and all, but you know, has anybody actually ever used it? Um, so I just want to highlight a few real world usage that people have mentioned. Vimeo serving AVF images, and in their blog post, they mentioned they're seeing about 30% savings versus WebP images, and about a 50% 50 50 savings versus JPEG images. Note, a few slides ago, I showed a, a slide showing AVIF, AVIF getting about 85% smaller than JPEG. A couple of things here. One, the JPEGs were captured from my mobile phone, and the JPEG compression was probably not as good if you used a better compressor like uh, Moz JPEG. The two, those images are 12 megapixels. So in general, the larger resolution, the better ADIF can compress compared to JPEG. Uh, Unsplash was another uh, company that recently tweeted, and they're seeing about uh, 30 foot savings over uh, WebP from switching to ADIF, pretty much the same as Vimeo. Uh, there was another developer who tweeted that they were seeing about uh, an 11% LCP, again, this is the largest contentful, largest contentful paint improvement when they switched over, they had about 14, millions of, 14 million images on, across all of their various sites. So they were really happy uh, with the improvement. Okay, so I'm gonna back up a little bit here and talk about image quality. I mentioned it before, but, but what does that exactly mean? Uh, well, everyone sit back, for the next 12 hours, and we can talk about image quality. But seriously, image quality is a very broad and complex topic. Uh, for the purposes of this presentation, we don't have the time to get into it. But when I'm talking about image quality, 
Uh, I'm usually talking about some objective value that tells us how similar one image is to another image. Uh, you most likely heard about PSNR, SSIM metrics, but there are many, many more, including VMAF, Paragli, MSSI SIM, Simoraka, and, and many, many more. Um, and the reason we talk about image quality is because when we are comparing lossy compression, we need to evaluate how similar the different codecs are compared to the source image. As an illustrative example, I could create an image codec that would take any image and change all the pixels to a single value. The compression ratio would be ex exponentially better than any other current codec, but the quality would be non-existent. So for this reason, when comparing lossy compression, the compression ratio and quality go hand in hand. Now, when you see information comparing the size of one compressed image versus another lossy compressed image, and there's no quality information, then you can usually assume the quality was the same, or hopefully assume that. Um, and then uh, if you want to see more information on the subject, uh, Jake Archibald did a, had, had a great post on it. It, it's, it compares AIF to a lot of other image formats, um, and it's listed here on the slide. And if someone could be so kind as to copy in the chat, that would be great. All right, so now that was the first part of the talk. I just wanted to get a little background information for everyone. Now we're going to kind of go into uh, some tools to create AVIF images. Um, well, first, I, I, I want to talk about uh, image CDNs. Uh, image CDNs are a really easy way to add support for image formats like AVIF to your website, as well as other image, for, image formats like WebP. Um, there are many image CDNs that have support for AVIF. I'm not going to go into detail on how to use any specific image CDN here, as they all have their own APIs uh, for hosting and transcoding. Uh, in general, most work, you upload your image to the CDN, then you use the image CDN API to transcode the source image to ABIF and some other formats uh, like WebP. And then you add the image CDN servant code to your, your web page to serve the best image format. Wink, wink, ABIF to the user. So uh, they're a great way to do it, but I, I just don't have time to go into every single one. There, there's many out there. If you just uh, you know search for them, uh, you, you can find a bunch. Scroosh. Uh, OK, so an easy way to compress AVIF images is to use uh, uh, the Scroosh.app on the web. So let me switch my presentation over to Scroosh. You should be seeing, okay, yeah. So now you can see Scroosh. So this is the main page for Scroosh. So I'm just downloading the image and my other computer. So uh, this is the main page for Scooch again. As you can see, you can uh, drag and drop images to, uh, to the editor here. Or you can scroll down, and they have uh, different images uh, here that you can try. Uh, I'm going to pick an image that I uh, listed earlier, a JPEG image. And drop it over. So. For, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, 
after the image pops up, I'm going to change it to uh, pick AVAF in the drop down box. So, what it'll do, if, if you see it on the bottom right, the anime symbol, it's meaning it's, it's compressing it as we speak. So, all of the compression is done in your browser. So, the image isn't actually uploaded anywhere. They do it uh, you know, through a WASM encoder. Okay, so once Swoosh is done, as here, you can see that uh, it compressed the original JPEG image to an AVF file, and it says it's 87% smaller uh, by 180, 138 kilobytes. Um, the source image is on the left. The compressed image is on the right. The slider, you can move back and forth to see the difference. Um, as you can see, I hope it might be a little harder with the presentation, but they're fairly similar. Um, now, okay, I'm going to talk about the two sliders underneath. So here's over here. There's a quality slider, which the default is set at 30. Um, this is basically the target quality you're trying to achieve. The higher the quality, the better image will look, but the file size will, will be bigger. For example, I put the quality to 55. There we go. Uh, and once it's done, you'll see that we're basically trading the size of the image for quality. Okay, so yeah, so now that it's done, uh, you can see that the, the file is now only 45% smaller, uh, about 606 kilobytes. Uh, but the quality should be much better. It's, again, it's probably hard to see over the video feed, but you can uh, you know, try this out on your own time. Um, so now I'm going to change the quality to 5. So this will be much worse quality. And I think you'll be able to see the difference. Again, once the squish is done. Yeah, so now I, I, I can definitely see it. I don't know if you can see it over the video feed. Uh, but it's 98% smaller. It's, it's a, a pretty small file, but you can tell the quality is definitely not anywhere as close to the original. So let's put this back to 30 again. The nice thing, it, it, it kind of caches your, your settings. So let's talk about the effort slider. Uh, so first, I'll change the effort to zero. So the effort is basically how, how fast you're um, allowing the compressor. You're, you're basically trading time for size and or quality. So I have quality 30 and effort zero. So you can see the file is a little bit bigger. Um, and it's probably a little bit worse quality. Uh, again, it might be hard to see over the video feed. Uh, but those are those are the the, the kind of the, the two main settings for Scrooge. Uh, here's some advanced settings. I don't know if you can see them, but um, the subsample for chroma is half. It's what a lot of uh, video images, they'll kind of uh, subsample the chroma because it usually you won't use as much information. If you have like text or other types of images or sharp lines, you might not want to subsample the chroma. Um, you can separate the alpha quality so you can give the alpha its own quality compared to the color image. Uh, extra chroma compression will just try to compress the chroma more because a lot more people are sensitive to Luma. And sharpness is just, um, it, it'll pre-sharpen the image. Uh, so that, that can be kind of good. So sometimes when you're compressing, it can blur the images a little. Noise synthesis is, uh, it adds noise. It'll try to, if you take away noise, it'll try to add noise back in the original image. Uh, tuning is just whether you want to tune to a specific objective measurement. And uh, the log two of tile rows and the log two of tile com columns. I'll, I'll talk about this more later. But this basically, you can split the image uh, into different tiles, which will help with multi-threading, uh, both encoding and decoding at a very small loss, maybe in quality, around the tile edges. OK, let me go 
back to the presentation. Oh, also, if you click this kind of uh, download simple list it, or this save as symbol, this will save the image to your hard drive. Okay, switch back. All right. So I know that was kind of quick uh, for Scroosh, but I, I find it really a really easy tool uh, if you want to just do a couple quick test compressions uh, to use. So this is uh, uh, some other tools that you can use on the desktop um, that support AVIF. GIMP is a, a pretty popular image uh, editing program. It supports reading and writing AVIF files. Uh, Paint.net is uh, a Windows application which supports reading and writing AVIF files. And there's even a Photoshop plugin. Um, so you can read and write AVIF images uh, from Photoshop. Oh, so let me see. Is there a way to set target size to get a record before it? Uh, Brett. Brent asked, is there a way to specify a target image size and get recommended format and quality settings for the best result? No. So you want to set the target compress size, not in um, squish, or squish, I don't think. I think there's some other tools that will let you do that, but typically you, um, if you want to set a target size, you, you might have to recompress a couple times to try to hit that size. And let's see. Another question is, Frank, how does JPEG XL compare to AVIF? Will you talk about this presentation? So um, I'm not planning to talk about JPEG XL in the presentation, but I can, I can talk about it here. Uh, JPEG XL is very close to AVIF. Um, the quality is very close, especially you know if you're looking at uh, perceptual quality or the objective measurements I talked about. I think they're they're really close. Depends on which measurements you're using. Um, we actually work with the JPEG XL team very closely, and uh, the, the the decode and encode times are very close. In my experience, EVF decodes a little bit faster than JPEG XL where JPEG Excel encoder is a little bit faster, so but, but they're very close. Uh, automatic, automated AVIF converters. Photoshop, the best tool convert, converting for images. Ah, OK, I'm going to uh, Br Brent asked about auto automated AVIF converters. And is Photoshop the best tool for converting images, for instance, 100K? No, I'm, I'm, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about more kind of like command line tools that would be better for automated uh, conversion of AVIF images. Oh, so here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about, so, so here it is now. So uh, a lot of the tools and applications that use to create AVIF either use libAVIF or libheap underneath. Uh, they're both two open source libraries uh, that are on GitHub. Uh, the command line tool AVI Inc from the libAVIF project is a powerful application for creating AVI images. Uh, the steps are below, or the steps to download uh, and, uh, uh, and to build the AVIF command line application. So if someone could please put that in post in the chat, that would be great. So these are the recommended settings for, uh, for what we found to be the best quality versus size and time trade-off. Uh, on my machine, using the source image that, that we used in the Squish demo, uh, with the recommended settings, the file size we compressed to uh, is about 189 kilobytes. The size is a little bigger than the file created in Squish, as the settings were different. Uh, but I think the file we just, the file that I created with ABI Inc. has better quality, uh, especially if you look at the two images side by side. Uh, and we're going to talk about the settings a little bit. The, the min and max parameters tell the AV1 encoder that it can use the full range for the quantization. So quantization, you can kind of think of like reverse quality. 
a high quantization of like in the 60s would be very bad quality, much like the quality number five in Skloosh, while a very low quantization in the single digits would be very high, high quality. Again, much like the 55 quality in the Skloosh demo. Uh, the end usage parameter tells the encoder to set constant quality mode which the encoder will then use the CQ level parameter to set the target quantizer. Again, you can set it between zero and 63, I believe. Um, so the CQ level parameter is, again, the first quality parameter from Squoosh. High CQ level, like in the 60s, be bad. Low CQ, CQ level, like in a single digit, would be high quality. Uh, the three settings, tune equals SSIM, Delta Q, Delta Q, uh, Delta mode equals three and sharpness equal three are settings that we found to just generate better quality for images, especially uh, uh, high quality images. And the last setting, Y uh, dash Y four two zero, that's the one to subsample the chroma values. Um, again, if your images have a, a lot of text or very sharp lines, um, then you might not want to set this parameter and, and leave it uh, uh, leave it out, which would then default to being 444, which is like full uh, Luma and full chroma. Um, all right, so the settings I used in the previous slide took about 3.2 seconds to encode the 2K uh, ABF image on my machine. Uh, it on my machine's pretty fast. I think it's you know, a few years old. Um, but there's, the, the, there's another parameter for AVIN, AVIF Inc. It's the speed parameter. So the speed parameter is, a, is like the reverse of the effort parameter in the Squoosh app. The speed, the speed parameter tells us how much time we're going to give AVIN, AVIF Inc. to compress the AVIF image. A lower number will take longer to compress, but will look better. A, high, a higher number will compress quicker, but the size and or quality will be worse. The default speed for ADIF Inc. is six. We found this to be a good trade-off of quality and size for time. Um, there's also one more setting that I recommend you set. This is the jobs parameter, which will tell ADIF Inc. how many threads to use when encoding the image. If I add the uh, minus jobs eight parameter encoding, uh, uh, to the encoding, the same image took about 1.2 seconds versus uh, 3.2. Now, so there's a there's also another common use case uh, for catalogs with a lot of images. Some companies create images uh, on the fly based on demand, and then we we'll usually cast these images for a certain period of time. Uh, in this use case, encode speed is paramount. Uh, I think Vimeo talked about doing this for in their blog posts as well. The differences from the recommended settings is I removed the Delta AQ mode, which is a little slow for this use case. I also changed the speed to nine and added the tile rows log and tile column, uh, tile calls log parameters that I talked about before. Um, also, this, these, this is, um, these parameters will, the tile calls log and tile rows log, if you give it a value of two, it's a, it's a it's a log value, so it'll actually make four, just just so you know. Um, and then with these parameters, again, as I said before, they'll they'll split up the encoder image into independent tiles for the encoder work on these sections independently using multiple threads. Uh, you can also add these parameters to the the non on the fly use case encodes as they'll speed up encoding and decoding as well. Using the on-the-fly encoding sec using the on-the-fly encoding settings, AVF Inc. took about 350 milliseconds to encode the 2K image on my machine. Also note that the decode of the JPEG image takes about 100, millise 100 milliseconds on my machine. So if I were to pre-decode the image into a raw format like Y4M, I could cut the encode time and the encode time down to about 250 milliseconds on my machine. So overall, we went from 3.2 seconds in the beginning using single thread encoding to 1.2 seconds using multiple threads down to about 350 milliseconds using the on-the-fly encode settings. 
Uh, one more thing to note before we move on is that we're actively working on this, making the encode of ADF faster and better. This graph tracks the transcode time of um, like 8.1 megapixel images for the past year or so. You kind of see, you know, uh, we went from about five, it's hard to see, five seconds maybe, uh, close to five seconds, uh, you know, about a year ago. And speed six is the default setting for ABF Inc. So that's down, you know, to about you know, one, one uh, second. And then the red line is um, is on the apply encoding settings, which, you know, are down to two, 300 milliseconds, something like that. And we, we, we're, we're still working on this. I know in the past couple of weeks, we've gotten, you know, probably 10, 20% better. So those, you know, come out all the time. Okay, uh, so ABIF supports animated files. Um, and ABIF Inc. Uh, supports these as well. You have to use, the, the input has to be Y4M, which I talked about before. It's basically a raw format. So you can use these to create animated ABIF images. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't ask Frank, do you know why Chromium Edge supports JPEG Excel behind a flag doesn't support ABF at all? Um, so, yeah, so we, we've talked to the Edge team, um, and they were prioritizing the ABA1 video. I hope that they'll support ABIF soon, but it's really up to them. Um, the last time we talked to them, they were just, you know, trying the resources to make sure that the AV1 video playback worked as best it could. Because there's a lot of people, AV1, AV1 video has been out for uh, a little bit longer than AVIF video. And I think there's a lot more people using AV1 video than AVIF images today because that's newer. So, but I'm hoping it'll be out relatively soon. Okay, back to the presentation. Oh, and if, before anyone asks, I have no idea about Safari. Um, talk to your local Safari representative, but I, have, I really have no idea. All right, so, um, so I listed uh, a way to create Y4M files using FFmpeg. Uh, I think that's what you know, most people do. I started with uh, from a GIF file. I, I added the link to the Y4M file I created. Just note, the Y4M files are not compressed, so they can be very big. I, I tried to keep the resolution and length of the animation small because of that. Uh, I also listed the AVIF in command line to create an animated AVIF file. You can uh, change you know, other settings as well. This is just, I just used some default settings. Um, and now that you know you created an animated AF file, that would render much like a GIF file in the Chrome browser. Uh, currently, this only is supported in Chrome. So uh, I'm hoping you know the other browsers will, the Firefox. I hope it will add um, animated AF support soon. All right, so that kind of brings us to the end of our creation part. Now I'm going to go into the next section, which talks about uh, serving the AVIF images. So do not serve AVIF images straight through the image tag. You can, you can serve AVIF images if you set the source attribute of the image tag, but this is not recommended as the browsers that do not support AVIF will not render the image. The only way, you should even do that is if you have some, you're in some closed system that you know everyone will be on a browser that supports AVIF. So, 
The best way to serve image images is to wrap them in a picture element. Uh, the, the browser will consider each child source element and choose the best match among them. If there are no matches found, the browser doesn't support the picture element. The image element, uh, child element, will be used. So I'm going to switch over to an example of serving the AVX image that uh, we created earlier. Oh, thank you, Henry. Uh, you should see a code pen, I believe now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to add the AVI image I created earlier in the source element. We don't see anything yet. Uh, because for picture element, they want the fallback image tag. So I'm going to add our original JPEG. So now you'll see below that the they downloaded uh, an image and rendered it. If I go to Save image as should be. Uh, well, you can't see it, Come on, but it, trust me, it's the AVIF image. Uh, and also, you should add WebP as well if you can, uh, because for browsers like Edge and Safari, I don't. Oh, shoot. that don't support uh, ADF yet. Um, it's better to add WebP. They'll, they'll give you much quicker time for download, better core web vitals if, if you're using WebP over JPEG for um, you know, Safari and uh, Edge. And I listed. Um, I have a code pen that's, that's saved with this uh, on the slide. So go back. Shoot. Bear with me, I lost my presentation. Okay, we're back. So the next uh, is gonna show how to Just looking. Uh, okay, just seeing if there's any more questions. All right, next, I'm going to show how to serve uh, an AVIF animated image. So, as long as I don't lose everyone, I'm going to go back to my Code Pen sandbox. Yeah, and let me clear. The images, keep the picture tag again. And then I 
I will add uh, the animated GIF as the first source, the animated WebP the second source, and then the fallback image as the GIF file. So again, on Chrome and Firefox, this will um, the download and render the AVIF image. On Edge and Safari, this will download the animated WebP images. And then we have the fallback of the GIF for the older browsers. You know, but I think it, at this point, most people at least, or most browsers at least support WebP. Uh, yes, the record, the, yes. We will we'll share the recorded sessions. I don't know where, but I know all of the sessions are recorded and will be shared. If anyone knows, please, uh, please uh, speak up if they know where they're going to be shared. I don't. So let me I'll talk a little bit. So the. Animated web, uh, the animated area quality is much, much better and about 80% smaller than the GIF file. Uh, also, the animated AVIF is only about 50% smaller than the animated WebP, while the quality is about the same. Um, a couple of things about animated AVIF files they're almost identical to AV1 video files. Uh, there are a few fields in the headers that are different. and and also, you know, second, I was going to say, we already said, only supported in Chrome as of today. Okay. So, um, all right. So now I'm going to talk a little about uh, EVF and, and LCP. Uh, so LCP, I mentioned before, is the largest contentful paint. Uh, it's one of the core web vital metrics that a lot of people look at and, and, and judge their uh, the quality of their site. Um, so I was going to just show how to how you can. Uh, actually capture the, the LCP data. So let me switch back. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the animated images. Now that we see nothing again. Uh, okay, I'm also gonna add a little text area just so we can output the LCP information on the web page itself. And then I will, uh, well, before, before I do that, I'll actually put in the, the JavaScript code to capture the LCP. Um, so basically, the performance observer has one parameter. It's an entry list. The entry list should contain only one element. And you can get the LCP uh, from the start time attribute. I'm also going to output the, the LCP time in the URL. Um, the, URL the URL should match the URL of our AVIF file. So let me add. The GIF image. I can actually get all all of them. And I'm copying and pasting just to save some time here. All right, so I added. Um, the AVIF, the WebP, and the JPEG to the picture. Now, the one thing, 
uh, to know. Uh, let's see, perhaps I reload this. Oh, what is my save? Um, I don't know why, but in CodePen, I don't always get the LCP. Uh, I think CodePen might be taking uh, control of it so it doesn't help. Oh, there we go. So it, sometimes it works in CodePen, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not quite exactly sure why. Uh, but outside of LCP, or outside of CodePen, the LCP uh, gets fired 100%, uh, just so you know. But I, I outputted here the LCP. So this is the LCP. The time is in milliseconds. And you can see the, you know, the URL is the EBAF file for the LCP. Again, yeah, there's not much going on in this example web page. You just have a text area and then an image to uh, a, picture te a picture element. So let me go back to the presentation. And All right, so it's, it's a quick interlude, uh, WebP. So WebP is supported in all browsers now. I mean, I know we're talking about AIF. I just want to kind of mention this here. Because um, as, as Henry said, you know, AIF is kind of on the bleeding edge. Um, and we're starting to see, you know, some adoption is definitely growing a lot. Um, but WebP is supported in all the major browsers now. And WebP should be better than JPEG. Uh, lossless WebP should be better than PNG. And animated WebP should be better than GIF. Basically, if you're still serving JPEG, PNG, and or GIF, you really should look into at least switching to WebP. As since all the major browsers support it, there's very few reasons not to, to uh, serve WebP over those other kind of more legacy image formats. Uh, and then, going to talk about another way to kind of measure uh, performance. This is um, for those developers that want to get a little more granular information than what LCP gives you. Uh, one alternative is to use the image decoder API from the web codex API. Uh, so I listed the URLs to get a little more info on both AP uh, APIs. Um, as you can see, the image decoder API is a relatively new API, only releasing in Chrome and Edge 94. Uh, Firefox also worked on the specification, so I'm assuming implementation will hopefully be there in the near future. Uh, so let me switch back and I'll, I'll sh show you how to use this. There's going to be a lot more JavaScript code for this one. So um, if you want to follow along, you know, you, I, I have the image decoder example uh, code pen shared at that link. Okay, so first let me get rid of uh, the picture tag, the picture element. I'm going to leave the text to area element and then. Uh, I'm going to add uh, two buttons, one to load an AVIF image and one to load a JPEG. Oh, oh shoot. It, the, yeah, I forgot to mention the other, uh, with the LCP, like I didn't, the reason I didn't have a button to load the image in the LCP example is because rendering the button will trigger the LCP. As you can see here, you have the LCP timing and then the URL blank because it's not loading an image. It's basically from the um, LCP. So I'm going to get rid of the JavaScript for the LCP. Uh, yeah, this, uh, all right. And then next, uh, copy in some JavaScript. First part of the JavaScript is basically just some global variables to make life a little easier for this example. 
Then I'm going to add two functions. So these are the functions that the buttons uh, in, in the page call. So load AVIF function, a load JPEG function. Um, basically, is telling the uh, the first part of the function is just telling the text area that it's loading a JPEG or an AVIF, and then we get the image URL and the mind type, and we call the download image function, which I will add next. Okay, so the download image function again just takes the image URL and the MIME type, uh, gets the time right before the fetch. We're just using an, an XML HTTP request to get the, the image, uh, the compressed image data. Uh, we call the onload function, which will, uh, when the when the image is downloaded, we'll call the decode image function, which I will go copy now. Okay, so the, the decode image function takes the encoded uh, image data and the MIME type. I first uh, get the time after the download, so we, can, so we can track that later. I create the new uh, an image decoder from using the new image decoding API, and then I actually uh, decode the image and then uh, give it a callback for render image, which I will then. Go and copy now. And then, so here is the render image function. So the render image takes the, the decoded data. Uh, I first get the time for when the decode was ended. Then I get the canvas that I added below uh, the two buttons. And I get, uh, then I draw the decoded image on the canvas, get the time after the render. And then I output all the download, decode, and render, as well as the total time into the uh, text area. So I'll go ahead and if everything is correct. I'll click the load JPEG button. So, uh, so, yeah, okay. so you can see the download, the decode, and the render time and the total time. And, and we have our image that we've been using. So this is the JPEG. Uh, I'll do this a couple more times. Oh, so now the download is much quicker because we're using, because the image is cached. Let me, uh, I'm going to put on the developer tools just so, and I have it set so to not cache in my developer tools. Okay, so we'll try this again. So now the JPEG. Uh, it's taking much longer. You can see, I uh, want you to, it's, it's kind of ready, I guess, in the server, I guess in the edge server, it goes much quicker. But on average, it takes, you know, probably 100, 150 milliseconds to download, about uh, 90 milliseconds to decode, and then, you know, less than 10 milliseconds to render. For the JPEG. Now, I can do the same for AVIF. Uh, you can see once you download the first time, it gets much quicker to download. Um, 
you know, on a high speed network. So, you know, it trends to, you know, about 50 milliseconds to download and then decode is it's about 48, 50 milliseconds to decode. Uh, so if, if you notice, <laughs> The actual decode of the AVIF image is, is is quicker than the decode of the JPEG image. Um, this is a little. This might be a little counterintuitive, uh, because the more modern cortexs are more complex and should take more time to decode, which, which is usually true. Uh, but the other thing to note about image codecs that in general the more data to decode, or put it another way, the bigger the encoded image, the longer it takes to decode in general. So what is happening is that our AVIF is about 80% smaller than our source JPEG. And for that reason, it's much quicker to decode. If, if you were to take the JPEG image, uh, make it much smaller, or maybe, you know, put it in a better compression or, or even make it about the same size as the AVIF, but at the same, uh, uh, you know, what's at, at worst quality, uh, I would expect the JPEG to decode faster. Back to the presentation. Okay, this is Henry says size or weight, which matters more for decode speed? Um, so wh hmm. what, what do you mean by weight exactly? Just how the different options you give it to compress? Ah, okay. So, all right. So, like resolution versus size. Um, I think it, in general, yeah, the resolution will affect the speed more than the size. In general, um, you know, it, that's with everything with compression. It all depends on you know your source images and also kind of in your code your coding settings as well, but. As a rule of thumb, the resolution will take longer to decode than, than the size. You know, if you're going up in twice the resolution versus twice the size, usually the resolution will take longer. So um, that's, that, that actually concludes our session. Uh, for CDS intro to API images. I just want to thank everyone for joining.